Up to now, we have studied how to optimize convex functions. In this video, I will discuss how to optimize non-convex function. So, non-convex function is difficult to find the global optima because the non-convex optimization have this kind of function shape. So here, so this represents the input x and this represents the function value. And this function is non-convex and having many local minima. So there is two local minima, one and two. And actually there are three critical points, one, two, and three. Okay, so this is local maxima. Right, so basically with a gradient descent approach, if we start from here, the gradient descent approach will converge to here and will be stuck there because at this point we have gradient value equal to zero which means we do not move anymore okay so uh, the the result of the optimization problem very depend on the initial point if you start from here with high probability you can convert to here but if you start from here or here, then you will have uh, another result like this. Okay. Um, and this is some another non-convex optimization problem. Here, there is no local optima. It's kind of this is um, called the saddle point. So saddle point also make the optimization problem difficult because here your gradient is almost zero or zero and which means with any step size your update length is almost zero and which means you cannot uh, you cannot escape from this area okay so which make your optimization process very very slow Another example is this. So from here, your function is kind of exponential minus x, then there is no op local optimal there, but always decrease. Okay. And but this is the global optimal you want to find. So if your starting point is this, then there is no problem. You can convert to here. But if your starting point is this, then your update procedure always go there and move away from the global optima and go to plus infinity which is not a good sign in terms of the utility function values so you can achieve this if you start from here but if you start from here your optimal point is far from the global optima so this is not a good sign and Essentially, because of this shape of non-convex optimization problem, it is very, very difficult to find global optima. And almost impossible to guarantee uh, global optima. So, um, in this uh, chapter or in this section, I will not uh, guarantee the global optima convergence property. Instead, I will uh, explain how to find any local optima and how to guarantee the convergence to the local optima. Okay, and with non-convex optimization, it is very natural. The performance very depend on initial point. In your application and your machine learning application, uh, it is quite uh, obvious thing. If you set very bad initial point, then your performance is very bad. So, for instance, if you train a neural network, if you follow some very bad initial policy, then your performance is very bad. So you must follow some well-known, well-behaved uh, initial point method. Okay. So. For making theory, I will assume very important property, smooth but not necessarily convex functions. So here, I will assume the function is beta smooth. 
like a beta smooth convex function. When function is beta smooth, the function uh, satisfies this. Okay. So this is for the case your function is locally convex, and this is for the case your function is locally concave. So basically, the beta smoothness uh, means your if your function is um, second derivative function, then beta smooth means uh, Hessian of your function f. The norm of Hessian of your function is always bounded by beta. Okay, so your Hessian is uh, bounded by beta. The norm of your Hessian is bounded by beta. Then we can say your function is beta smooth. Okay, so this is the root. If you have um, bounded, uh, uh, if you have beta smooth property, you have these two property. You are your Hessian function is uh, bounded by beta and your gradient is beta ripsis continuous for all x and y for all x okay so this is the definition of uh, beta smoothness okay so now, again, we will analyze how to uh, guarantee the local optima point using gradient descent approach and what is the convergence speed. So here we will show that a gradient, norm of gradient vector converts to zero because at the local optima point, at local optima point, we have zero gradient value. Okay, so we will show that when t go to infinity, your gradient converts to zero. Okay. Uh, but this does not mean your function value converts to the global optima point fx star because there could be many local optima. And if you start from here, you can say that your gradient converts to zero by converting to here. But you cannot say from this point your trajectory converts to here, the global optima. So your fxt can have some gap to with respect to the global optima. Even if you iterate your gradient descent process infinitely many iterations. Okay. Right. So this is the zero gradient descent on smooth function. Let f be differentiable with a global minimum x term. Furthermore, suppose that f is smooth with parameter beta, so beta smooth, so your Hessian is bounded by beta. Choosing size gamma, again, 1 over beta. So remember, we, we have a 1 over beta scale uh, step size when we have beta smooth convex function and at that time we have very nice convergence rate so again for beta smooth non-convex function we will use one of beta step size one of beta step size is very nice even if the function is not convex okay then the one over t times summation gradient of fx t norm the square is bounded by 2 beta over capital T times fx0 minus fx star. So, because this is bounded and this is just constant, when capital T go, go to infinity, this entire value go to 0, so which means the average of non square value converts to 0 as well. So when your uh, average norm square converts to zero means your limit point norm square is zero. Okay. So from this you can guarantee this. Okay. So how to show this? Since f function is beta smooth, we have uh, this property. Okay fx t plus 1 is less than or equal to fx t plus gradient of fx t transpose 
xt plus 1 minus xt plus beta over 2 xt minus xt plus 1 dot square this comes from beta smooth property and then since the step size gamma is equal to 1 of beta uh, from the above uh, since xt plus 1 is equal to xt minus gamma times gradient of fxt when you replace xt plus 1 um, by xt minus gamma gradient of, of fxt and z gamma is equal to 1 over beta here and here then you essentially have this fxt minus fxt plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 over 2 beta times gradient of fxt in the square so from which we can directly conclude that sum of gradient norm square is upper bounded by 2 beta times so here I skip the one step 2 beta times from t0 to capital T minus 1 fx t minus fx t plus 1 okay okay so when you sum from capital T uh, t equal to 0 to capital T minus 1 you end up with this form fx0 minus fx t because uh, you cancelled out each other right so fx star is always less than or equal to uh, fx capital T because fx star is the global minimum point you have this inequality and so naturally you have the previous theorem statement so why 1 over beta is good so as I explained earlier for convex optimization case when you have beta smooth behavior basically when you have this local optima with any starting point when you set gamma is 1 over beta, your update never cross the, this line. Okay? There's no overshooting when you set gamma equal to 1 over beta. Okay? So, gamma equal to 1 over beta is the largest step size that can guarantee no overshooting. With 1 over beta, with any starting point, with any point, your gradient update never cross the local optima point this length always less than or uh, this length always greater than or equal to gamma times gradient of uh, your function value okay so your update gamma times gradient of fxt always less than or equal to the distance to the local optima so there's no overshooting 1 over beta is the largest step size so this is very important to make a fast convergence that guarantees no overshooting no overshooting is also very important to make a very stable convergence behavior okay so no matter what uh, your function com convex uh, concave no matter I don't care if your function is beta smooth the best step size is a 1 over beta, right?